at Duke University, uh, the master's related to quantum computing is a concentration in a larger master's program, which is the master's in electrical and computer engineering. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what's good about the, our program in ECE master's program, and then talk a little more specifically about the quantum part in the middle. But I think in choosing a master's program, of course, you want to take all of these things into consideration. So the top five reasons we list for, for doing a master's in electrical and computer engineering at Duke is, of course, excellence, compelling curriculum, good career outcomes from our alumni, uh, student support and programs, and then the location here in, in Durham, North Carolina, and the campus itself at Duke. So in terms of excellence, um, Duke University is one of the top universities in the world. Uh, it's a quite small university. It has about 6,500 undergraduates and slightly more graduate students. It's broken up into 10 schools and colleges. Uh, it's located in Durham, North Carolina, which is a town of a few hundred thousand people, but in a metropolitan area of um, close to a million. Uh, it also has global campuses. Uh, there's a campus in China, Duke Kunshan, and then there's a joint effort between Duke and the National University of Singapore Medical Schools in Singapore. And in the United States, of course, Duke is very famous for its basketball team, the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, the Pratt School of Engineering is um, a quickly rising engineering school. It has a huge amount of funded research over a wide range of topics. Uh, there are about 1,000 graduate students, 1,200 undergrads, 140 faculty. Uh, we have strong departments and programs um, in biomedical engineering, civil environmental engineering, ECE, mechanical engineering and material sciences, and also in engineering management. And Duke's a very highly interdisciplinary place um, with a very collaborative, collaborative culture. Uh, the quantum effort, of course, is inside of electrical and computer engineering. So again, electrical and computer engineering, we have about 200 master's students, 200 PhD students, 40 um, master's in engineering students, uh, 30 tenure track faculty who have all kinds of awards and funds, and, um, and we're located in the heart of Duke campus. Uh, here at Duke, every master's student is assigned a faculty advisor. Uh, you know, the students are able to um, request rank advisor choices. And of course, things depend on availability and, and how it works out. Uh, but it's really one of the things we pride ourselves on is like making sure that every master's student gets a, a very personalized treatment. So moving on to the curriculum. Um, the ECE's master's program at Duke has a series of concentrations, software development, hardware design, data analytics and machine learning, quantum computing, microelectronics, photonics, and nanotechnology. And of course, it has the flexibility that you could design your own master's degree. Uh, today, I'm only going to focus on the quantum computing part of the curriculum. Um, so how the curriculum works, there's a lot of choices in the kind of degree you get. So if you get a master's in engineering degree, it is both a degree that teaches you technical skills, but also helps you um, gain some business leadership expertise. And it's a real focus on internships and projects and connection to, um, to classes which, which help you on sort of the innovation side of technology in terms of getting out product and understanding how that works. Uh, the master's in science curriculum, of course, uh, focuses more on the technical skills. Uh, there are a series of different paths. There's a coursework path where um, your master's degree just depends on your ability to complete a series of courses, some core courses, some technical electives and approved electives. There's a project path where you have a, um, a project that is part of your degree requirement. And then there's um, a thesis path where you have indeed more research projects usually done with a uh, faculty at Duke, um, or done, always done the faculty at Duke who have a larger sort of PhD programs. And these requires a couple of courses with thesis writing. So I myself have had um, two students um, do thesis, master's thesis with me in the area of quantum information. So our quantum information courses um, that focus specifically on quantum information are four. Introduction to Quantum Engineering, Quantum Information and Computation, Quantum Information Theory, and Quantum Error Correction. 
In addition, we have other quantum classes such as quantum mechanics, quantum electronics, which are more traditional quantum classes within the engineering discipline. Um, these specific quantum information courses have been developed by uh, myself and my colleagues Jung San Kim and Iman Marvian, and we're all um, internationally known experts in the field. Uh, these courses then connect to different tracks. So when we talk to companies about what they would want in a master's degree level quantum information engineer, uh, broke roughly into a software track and a hardware track. So the software track really builds off the strength of our software development concentration here in Duke ECE. And so it focuses on things like data structures, systems and engineering, um, how to do software engineering, this kind of programming levels. And the hardware track is more focused on sort of, um, say, RF design, or think about magnetic theory, how to build these electronic circuits, because these are the sort of, um, yeah, these are the technical skills one needs to actually help get a quantum computer to run, including, um, you know, things like optics and more advanced photonics techniques. So um, this is a picture from a, a recent um, United States National Academy's report on quantum computing's progress and prospects. And the important thing to note is just the small sliver on the right side is the quantum fabric. Everything to the left is a classical electronic device. And all of that classical electronic on the device from the cloud data center that allows access, the controller process layer, which then actually calls devices, the devices themselves, are all in the uh, realm of just classical electrical computer engineering. So when we think about these tracks, we think of sort of the quantum software engineer is living at a, the higher level of like, how do you interact with say users and clients? And then how do we transfer that information to the control process layer, which is the real time control? And the quantum hardware engineer sitting more on the boundary between these, um, you know, high end uh, radio frequency devices and then the underlying uh, quantum fabric. So I think there's plenty of opportunities in both directions and our uh, master's concentration gives the flexibility for students to, to explore both paths. Um, the Duke University tuition is, um, is expensive. It is like 20, 20 over $25,000 a semester. Uh, there are some financial aid, um, and although funding is limited, and there are also merit-based awards after the, the initial um, semesters. So part of the reason um, that the, well, that we, we also pride ourselves on our career outcomes. So um, typically in the summer, most of our students, uh, we, we work to get them internships uh, more than, um, most of them go into internships at uh, all kinds of companies. Um, currently, the number of ma master students focused on quantum information is quite small. And um, surprisingly, they've all interned at Microsoft. Uh, but there, there are all kinds of internship opportunities. Um, the master students internships generically have gone to a wide range of places in the US. And also, um, we have a large number of students who've done internships, say, in China. Um, in terms of outcome for our master's in science and master in engineering, uh, typically most students afterwards go into the private sector um, the, and, and they have usually quite reasonable salaries, uh, which is one reason why um, you know, people think perhaps the cost is worth, worth the reward. Uh, you will notice that there is, again, a small sliver that go into PhD programs. People, while in the master's program, think about maybe transitioning to the PhD program or apply to a PhD program somewhere else. Um, but again, in the United States, if you want to go, go towards a PhD, you can just apply directly to the PhD program. And um, so keep that in mind. Uh, again, we have alumni at all, basically, every corporation uh, doing anything technological or electronic. Uh, for student support and programs, um, we really focus on trying to have a community uh, where we generate these close-knit communities allowing our students to thrive. We do that through um, the, the master's coordinator, career services, communication centers, uh, focus on language services, very comprehensive orientation, 
and we try to have master students really um, involved in the, um, the community. Uh, in, in, in practice, we are able to build you know, these sort of lifetime friendships in the master's program, which we learn from when our alumni come back and tell us about the people they're still in contact with. Uh, again, that alumni yeah. network is a very critical part for um, generating, uh, you know, for generating jobs and support um, throughout the rest of your life. So then a little bit about Duke and Durham. Um, so one thing is that Duke is very positive about having students um, participate in innovation and entrepreneurship. And so there are a number of organizations on campus which help provide small amounts of seed funding to try to get um, Duke, Duke student companies up and going. Um, Duke is a, a, a liberal art, like has a large liberal arts university. It's sort of the core of the undergrad experience, I would say. Um, and this means that there's actually all kinds of events from um, really world-class uh, musicians coming, a phenomenal library, a great museum, an art center. Um, there's actually a, a ton of things to get involved in outside of the uh, day-to-day -day classes. Uh, Durham, North Carolina, as I mentioned, is again about a quarter of a million people. It's located in the Research Triangle, which that whole area is probably about a million people. Um, it is a great place to live. Food is delicious. Cost of living is low. There's an easy airport usually to get um, to a bigger airport, but there are direct flights to you know a few places in Europe. And so with that, I'll just finish up by talking about applying. So uh, this is a QR code, which I don't know if you can take a picture off of the screen. You can try. Uh, the Master of Science deadline is January 1st. Um, 2021, I should have updated that. Uh, Masters of Engineering, um, there, there's like a rolling round going through these things. Again, I should have updated these times, uh, dates. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the decision timelines for Masters is usually we give them out in January, February, and March. Um, there are some, we do look at applications holistically, but typically we do expect GPAs above 3.0 and um, tests of English as a foreign language uh, 90 or higher. Uh, if you're you know, below these points, like um, you know, it's com it is common for people to have like a bad year, uh, which maybe affects their GPA, um, just address it in your statement. Say, this is what happened. My freshman year, I didn't know what I was doing. Then you can see if you look at my sophomore through senior year, things are much better. Uh, Instead of the QR code, you can use, of course, this uh, direct web link to go there. And of course, there are, again, many possible concentrations. Um, and this, this quantum concentration is just a piece of the ECE master's program. Um, so then in terms of contacts, uh, I really recommend for any technical questions about applying and what the program looks like to reach out to Tony Strimple. Uh, his email is there. He is your key contact if you're interested in a master program at Duke. Um, and then um, the Pratt program, which is the, the School of Engineering above the Department of Electrical Computer Engineering, uh, you can reach out to Paige Anderson, who can also answer your questions. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your time.